He lives. He lives. Do you believe that he lives? Do I have some believers in here that believe that he lives? Amen. I'm going to give you the scriptures. And while you go going to your scriptures, I'm going to take care of some housekeeping real quick while y'all doing that. Um, our scripture will be coming out of Matthews 25, 31 through 46. First, I want to acknowledge my bishop, giving honor to God for the opportunity once again that I don't take lightly in speaking to his people. First Lady, ministers, deacons, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, and to my rib. the love of my life. See, as ministers, sometimes we get married into it. And sometimes we already know who they are, but we don't know the intel of what it needs to be as a spouse married to a minister. And I see my wife struggle sometimes trying to figure out what to do. But let me tell you, baby, just be yourself. Amen. You are doing just what God has called you to do. You give me that time with God. You give me that communion with God when it's time for me to either teach or preach. Amen. Let's get to the word of God. Matthews 25, 31 through 46. You there say amen, should be, amen, amen. But when the Son of Man came in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he went up, then he, then he will sit up upon his glory, glorious throne. 32, all nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as shepherds separate the sheep from the goat. 33, he will place the shepherd at his right hand and the goats at his left. 34, the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared before you from the creation of the world. 35, I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. Oh, God. And this technology, excuse me. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. 36. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you carried, cared for me. And I, and I will reply, Lord, when did we see, ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or in prison and not help you, 45? And he will answer, I tell you the truth, when you refuse to help the least of these brothers and sisters, you were refused to help me. 46, and he, they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. May the Lord have a blessing. The reason here is the Lord of his word. I am new with technology, Bishop, and I'm trying to learn. And I noticed that I did mix a couple of verses. But as the scripture says that the righteous did as God had called him to do. But the unrighteous did different from what God called him to do. Amen. Today, I want to talk about your fiduciary duties. 
your fiduciary duties. If you were here this morning, you heard the word by pastor talking about um, your consequences, choices and consequences, which wraps up to where we are today at your fiduciary duty. I've been in school for the last couple of months going to real estate school. And as I was studying, I run across this word fiduciary duties. And God showed me that this is in alignment with what we as Christians should be doing. Now, as I set this message aside, wasn't fully prepared and finished with it, I received a phone call. Well, let me step back. I heard Bishop mention one Sunday about how the last six months he was just going through the motions, waiting to hear from God, waiting on God to give him that next step into where um, he wanted redeeming grace to go. Amen? So, when I, when, I, when I received this prior to you saying this, Bishop, I said, wow. And I said, fiduciary duties. So when I looked at this and I put it together with the help through the Holy Spirit, God showed me some things. So my question today is, what agency are we working for? So the question we must ask, what is agency? An agency relationship exists when one person, the agent, acts on our behalf of another person, the principal, who is also known as the client. This relationship is a fiduciary relationship, meaning that it is a relationship based on trust. Let me say that again. It's a relationship based on trust. While treating all others honestly, the agent places the interest of the principal or client first. Does that sound familiar, saints? Now, let me ask you a question. Just raise your hand. Who are saved? has believed Jesus Christ, has risen from the dead. Amen. I see a few hands. So that means that this message is for you and me. Amen. All right. The agent must always rely on the principle. I'm, I'm getting tired of technology already, Bishop. <laughs> The relationship created either express or implied by law, whether the party called the principal or consultant um, delegates the transaction of some um, lawful business or authorities to do certain acts for him or in relations to his rights or property, with more or less uh, discretion power to another person. The contract of agency may be defined to be a contract which one of the contracting parties confides the management of some affair to be transacted in his account. As well as the job in the uh, workforce, we come to understand contract agreements with agencies and agencies of the company may have fiduciary duties upon keeping all information confidential. Fiduciaries are held to the highest, most good faith. Amen? Our requirements to exclude all selfish interests, listen to this, 
are prohibited from putting themselves in position where person, personal interests and representative interests will conflict and must in any direct dealing with the principal may fall, uh, um, make full disclosure of all re relevant facts and give the latter an opinion to obtain independent advice. Amen. No, know that I have given you all the um, understanding of an agent in our fiduciary responsibilities. Let's see how this applies to the spiritual aspects of our lives. Let me say it like this. Our contractor that we go up under is the word of God. Amen? Now, in, in, in the real estate realm, when you study, you become licensed after you have passed the test. Under the um, TREC rule, which is the uh, Texas Real Estate Commission, they have rules and guidelines that you must follow. Amen? Which is the word of God. Amen? Now, when you become licensed as a real um, agent, you have to go up underneath and assign broker. Amen? That broker is bishop. Amen? Y'all follow me? And as an agent, sign up under that um, 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 broker, which is the bishop, there are assignments that we must take. There are, even though we are independent contractors, because we are individual um, individual individual by Christ, there are still rules and guidelines that we must follow. By accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior over our lives, we gave and express our implied authority to enter into a personal relationship with Christ. That means that we have a fiduciary duty to keep him duty to him, meaning Jesus, to uphold obedience, loyalty, disclosure, confidentiality on behalf, my sister, on behalf of our contract obligated to our contractor, Jesus Christ. Obedience, number one. We are obligated to, opt, um, to, um, to be obedient to the Word of God. Amen? Not to bishop, but to the Word of God, which is that contractor that we have signed and said that we will follow. Amen? The loyalty. Our loyalty to be, uh, should be to God and God alone. By doing this, act God will bless us and bless those that are around us. Amen? The disclosure that we committed to, whatever is new or concealed to us, we must keep that disclosed. Too many times and too often I've heard things that's going on in the church from people that don't go to church. So that lets me know that those in the church are talking to those outside the church or what's going on in the church. Amen? We have to be disclosed in our confidentiality, which is next, which means that what is said must be said and kept to that individual. Amen? 
We wonder why people don't want to come to church is because it's too much mess in the church. There's no confidentiality in the church. Oh, the preacher's talking about me. Confidentiality, my brothers and sisters. Hebrews 2, 1 through 4 says, so we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we must drift, we may drift away from it. For the message God delivered through angels has always stood firm. In every violation of the law and every act of disobedience was punished. So what makes us think we can escape if we ignore the great salvation that was first announced by the Lord Jesus Christ himself and then delivered to us by those who heard him speak. And God confirmed the message by giving signs and wonders and various miracles, um, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Which leads us to the agent. We talked about Bishop. We talked about um, um, the contractor. Now we have the agent, which is us, which is the body of Christ. First Peter five one and uh, five. 1 through 5 says, And now a word to you who are elders in the church. I too am an elder, and I witness to the suffering of Christ. And I too will share in his glory when he re revealed the whole world, to the whole world. For a fe uh, fellow elder, I appeal to you to care for the flock, that God has entrusted in you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. And when the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown a never-ending glory and honor. In the same way, you, are, you who are younger, accept the authority of the elders. And all of you, dress yourselves in humility as you um, delight, delight to one another. For God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. As an ancient God, as a client of God, has given us a broker assigned to teach, watch, and pray for the well-being of the body. As agents of the broker, we fall under somewhat the same obligation according to the contract we agreed to. This is to build up and not tear down. Give hope of encouragement. Love those who be, uh, may be unlovable. Hope of encouragement. Love those who may be unlovable. Unlove, Tell people about the good, goodness of Jesus. Pray for those who are too weak to pray themselves. Recruit. Stay stand fast in the word of the Lord. As um, principles and clients come together. Bless those who persecute you. Romans 12, 14, 21. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Give in harmony with each other. Live in harmony with, you, with each other. Don't be proud. Um, to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. 
Hmm. Never pay back evil for evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are humble. Do all that you can li- um, do all that you can to live in peace with each other. Romans thirteen eight. Owe nothing to anyone except for the love. Except for your ob- um, obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. Our fiduciary duties is to love one another, pray for one another, never tear each other down, but lift each other up. Never talk about one another, but encourage one another as we grow in Christ. God has given us an assignment through our bishop. Our fiduciary duty is to follow that assignment and do what God has called us to do. If you are not part of this body, maybe today you will want to be part of this body. But let me not stop there because God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son Not to condemn the world, amen, but to save the world through him. Now, when when Jesus was walking, Jesus had asked the Lord, Lord, should I? But Jesus knew what his fiduciary duty was to do, regardless of the pain and sacrifice that he had to make because of our sins. I don't know about y'all, but that's something to shout about. Amen. Our fiduciary duty is to withstand just like Jesus and do the assignment that God has called us to do. It's not about us, but all about God. I thank God because when I look back over my life, when I did what I wanted to do, God said, no, son, this is not for you. This is not what I have for you. But to deliver the word of God, to touch those that are in your pathway, to tell them about the goodness of Jesus Christ and tell him how good God is and how he died upon the cross for your sins and mine. But, 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 but see, I was stubborn, Bishop. I was stubborn. No, I didn't realize what my fiduciary duties was, evangelist. I did not know. But God touched my heart, and he said, son, I got something for you. See, like David, see, I was stubborn, pastor. I didn't want to listen. See, but I was, while I was sinking, he sent me a Daniel, amen, and, and, and turned my life around. So no matter how far I struggled, no matter how far I fought, God fought right beside me. And he told me, pick yourself up, turn yourself around. Don't worry about what somebody else says. But the word of God says, you are forgiven. Remove yourself. I got a fiduciary duty for you to sign for you to do. There's work in the kingdom, my brothers and sisters. Don't give up. Don't give up the fight. The fight is not over. We may look like it's over. When we turn on the news, it may look like it's over. But guess what? Guess what? There's you. There's you. There's you. There's you. There's you. There's you. Spreading the word of God. Spreading the word of God. Amen. And like that pyramid, it just floats down. Amen. And and, and that that one takes three or four. The other one takes five or six. See, it, it multiplies. Amen. So as a shepherd over this house, let's continue to do our fiduciary duties in spreading God's word. Amen. There may be somebody here today that don't know God in the palm of their sins. And you want to.